Yo, yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I just finished watching the fight again. And um, I actually really enjoyed the fight. I enjoyed the fight. I'm watching it for a second time. Uh, first viewing, I had it uh, four to two per vacuum. Okay. Uh, before the uh, the seventh round. And then watching it just now, I had it three three. Um, but I thought, I thought, like, I, I want to say now watching it again, I had the fight. I, I had Joshua in control. I think the first couple rounds, he was a little stiff. He was shooting a good jab the first couple rounds, but it wasn't until he he dropped his lead hand uh he started to look a lot more confident and it looked it looked a lot more in control he was moving sideways he wasn't standing right in front of him anymore uh and i, I you know i he was looking a little slick in there like you know i was watching this I was watching his feet he was looking like i'm like yo look at look at anthony joshua try to fight like he's slick <laughs> uh but I thought it was a good fight. I had it 3-3. Three, three. Uh, I think Pavekin stole the first round. Uh, I think anyone can really still give that first round to Joshua. Uh, I gave it to Pavekin because of that combination at the last, you know, 10 seconds or so. But uh, Joshua was winning the first round until that combination. All right. Uh, let me close this window. Living in the city now. Everything is so noisy outside. But, um, all right, so let's get into it. Uh, I haven't spoken about heavyweights in a long time, all right? So, you know, there's so much that's going on. I, I didn't make any videos during the whole Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua thing that was going on after they won their fights earlier this year, okay? After Joshua beat Parker, after uh, Wilder beat Ortiz, I didn't speak about any of that shit that was going on with the 12 million, the 50 million, you know, canceled meetings, uh, you know, all this stuff that was going on. I didn't speak on any of that stuff. I'll, I'll address some of it in this video, but I'm not going to get too much into it. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why later. But as far as the fight, I think it was a very impressive and important win for Anthony Joshua okay uh probably probably the most important win that he's had uh since Vladimir Klitschko okay definitely the most important uh Povetkin has always been one of the top two or three dangerous opponents to fight and uh in the heavyweight division I believe that Ortiz and Povetkin were the most dangerous fighters uh Speaking off camera, I'm, I'm, I I'm, I used to always say to these people that I would talk boxing with, I don't know if either one of them could beat Ortiz or Pavekin. Like, I always thought Pavekin was dangerous. I don't like Pavekin. You know, he popped on two drug tests in one year, you know, and I used to question whether or not he's as good without those drugs, you know. That's what I question. And, and I used to always talk about the differences in his physique uh, physique in, in certain fights, uh, you know, I used to talk about these things back then, you know, before he popped on any tests, you know, I used to be like, you know, his, he, he looked, he looked buffer. He used to look like that. And I used to talk about these things, but regardless, the guy is a good fighter. He's a very skilled fighter for a guy to be six, two and in and, and a division where it's giants now, and for him to know how to fight these tall fighters and normally knock them all out, uh, he's still a very good fighter. I mean, for 39 years old, he's still fighting the exact same way. He didn't look old at all in there, you know. Uh, he didn't look old. I think he started to slow down after, you know, uh, during maybe the round after the fifth round. I think he started to slow down. But I don't think that was because of age. I thought it was because Joshua was shooting jabs to the stomach the entire fight since the opening the opening round. He was throwing jabs, and I think that at some point it's going to wear you down, you know? Um, Povetkin was going to Joshua's body pretty well, too, especially early. But uh, once Joshua started moving a lot more, wasn't fighting in a straight line, started moving sideways more, I think it was a little bit harder to hit, especially landing those combinations that Povetkin was landing earlier. I think Joshua 
made the proper adjustments and I think he is it started to become a little predictable to him. All right. Uh but it was his most important win, you know, and I think Joshua's resume is ridiculous at this point. I think there's no debating, you know, who has the best resume in, in boxing, you know, and the fact that he beat guys that like Dillian White, for example, Dillian White was undefeated when Joshua beat him. But at that time, Dillian White and Joshua didn't really prove in anything at heavyweight, but Dillian White went on to beat everybody else that he fought and he just beat a former champion joseph parker um and he actually beat him better than anthony joshua did in my opinion you know he, he actually knocked him down i believe a couple of times in that fight um so you beat guys like dillian white you beat klitsko you beat pavekin you beat tackham you know you beat dominic brazil who was also undefeated at that time okay and still a, a top guy over there in the WBC. Uh, you beat Charles Martin, who recently lost. You know, he hasn't really proven anything to me, but he has a very, very great, very good resume. I mean, even when you compare him to like guys like Tyson Fury, outside of the Klitschko win, you know, beating Derek Chisora a couple times, he doesn't really have the craziest resume. It's just that the fact that he beat Klitschko first, you know, in a fight that neither one of them pulled the trigger, you know, but Tyson Fury is a very good boxer. You know, I'm not trying to deny anything with Tyson Fury. I think he's very skilled, very talented, but I'll speak more of him later in this video. But Joshua, I was very impressed. I, I like to see adjustments in fights. I like take, I like seeing risk being made in a fight. I thought he overestimated Joseph Parker. Okay, I thought as dangerous, I understand the danger of fighting Joseph Parker. I think Joshua for him a little too dangerous. A lot of people didn't like when I said that earlier this year. But now when you look back at it and when you look at Parker's fight against Dillian White and when you look at this fight where, in my opinion, Anthony Joshua is fighting a more dangerous opponent in Alexander Povetkin. And he took more chances against Povetkin. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're trying to discredit this performance with Anthony Joshua, you're ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous because, look, look at Pavekin and look at all his fights. If you've seen his biggest fights, at least seen his biggest fights, I've seen him fight a lot. And I've never seen someone look that good against Pavekin, even Klitschko. Klitschko did a tap-tap hold the whole fight. It was one of the worst fights I've ever seen. It was one of the worst fights. That fight was even worse than the Tyson Fury fight, in my opinion. He literally tap, tap, held them for the entire fight, for the whole 12 rounds. And the ref didn't say anything. He let it go on for the entire fight. You know, for, for Joshua to actually fight this guy and actually take risk in the fight against a very hard-hitting opponent, I mean... Povetkin is definitely up there when it comes to punching power at heavyweight. He's definitely one of the hardest hitters, hitting fighters up there. And for Joshua to take those punches, make adjustments, and come back and stop him midway through the fight, very impressed. Very impressed. Uh, his most impressive fight, you know, outside of Klitschko, in my opinion. You know, and, and, and the Klitschko fight... You know, he fought Klitschko at his best. I mean, that's the best I've seen Klitschko. Klitschko fought like a guy that wasn't ready to retire. He fought like a guy that was desperate and he needed a win and he wanted to knock out. He fought aggressively. He applied pressure. We haven't seen Klitschko fight like that in a very long time since he was young and still losing fights here and there because he was a little bit more reckless, you know, and he would gas out and stuff. We haven't seen fights like that in a while, you know, since a younger Chris Klitschko. So... Very impressed with Joshua and his performance. Give a lot of credit to him. Um, I still think he's getting a little better. Uh, but you know what? At the same time, I don't think any of these heavyweights are. Like, none of them stand out to me. I thought that Tyson Fury stood out more than everybody else because of his skills set, you know, and his quickness. 
you know, and his volume and his height, you know, the way he moves in there, he was just so fluid. I mean, you look at him and his, you look at his shape, you wouldn't think that he was as good as he is. But he was very good. He stood out. Like, I didn't think, you know, when when Fury beat Chisora in a rematch at that point, even before the Klitschko fight, I didn't think anyone in the heavyweight division could beat Klitschko. I mean, Fury, except Klitschko. And then when, Klitsch, when Fury beat Klitschko, at that very moment, I said, there's no one in this division that could beat this guy. He will outbox Wilder. He will outbox Joshua. He will outbox anyone, you know, at that point. But Tyson Fury has been off for a couple years. And these last couple fights that he had, his comeback fights, I wasn't impressed. You know, I just wasn't. You know, I, I, I'm seeing he's getting it back together, and that's good. Um, he's losing the weight and everything, that's good. But he's not the same Tyson Fury. And as I, I, I am happy that Wilder is fighting you know, but I don't view Tyson Fury as the threat that he was a couple years ago. I know he's still the lineal champion and everything, but I don't see him as a threat. I have no problem with the fight. I think it's a great opportunity for Wilder. And there's a lot of people that disagree with me. There's a lot of people that think that Tyson Fury is still going to beat Wilder. He's still going to outbox him. And that's cool. It's just that I think for Fury to beat Wilder, he needs to be at his best. And Joshua. And some of the other top guys. I think for him to beat these guys, he need to beat what he needs to be at his best. You know, not being at his best, I think I think Wilder has a, a much greater chance. I think Wilder's gonna win the fight. You know. But even though the fight didn't happen between Joshua and Wilder, I'm at least happy that they're fighting good opponents you know what i'm saying like i'm happy apologize for the bell i live right across the street from a church so uh while they're uh what was i saying i lost my thought i'm at least happy that these guys are fighting good fighters while they're for ortiz he's fighting tyson fury now uh the fight is being made you know i was a little shaky i was watching i was paying attention to everything i wasn't sure if the fight was really gonna happen so i was a little worried that this fight wasn't going to happen, you know, for a minute. You know, I was a little worried about that. But uh, it seems like the fight is going to be, you know, scheduled for December 1st now. And I'm glad they're fighting, you know. And, and, and I think even though they didn't fight, like I said, they didn't fight. But at least they're fighting the other top guys that's there. I think uh, in this little tournament, like that, it, it's set up like a tournament now. You beat Parker, you beat Ortiz. Now you beat Pavekin, and now you beat Tyson Fury. I'm hoping he beats Tyson Fury because I want to see this fight. After this, I hope that this fight goes down in April. I think these guys have prepared enough for each other. I think they both have improved over the years. Uh, I think it took Wilder. It took Wilder longer to improve. Okay, than Anthony Joshua, but Anthony Joshua has, you know, he is a better amateur background you know um you know he's a gold medalist you know what i'm saying like it is what it is he came in he started doing his thing a little bit quicker than wilder there's nothing wrong with that okay but um i think it's time you know especially if wilder is to beat tyson fury if he is to beat tyson fury it's it's time it's time uh you know i'm not gonna speak forever on why the fight didn't take place um, there's some things that I didn't like specifically with the Wilder side. I personally wish Wilder took the fight. I think he should have took the 12 million. Uh, you know, you, you you haven't gotten paid much more than $2 million per fight. You're getting offered 12 million up front. I think you didn't have to take that offer, at least try to push for the 15. I think 15 is extremely fair for Wilder. Uh, Joshua, on the other hand, I heard some of the arguments back then. Why did they negotiate it like they did with all of the other fights, like the Joseph Parker fight? Well, Joshua shouldn't be getting paid what he got paid against Joseph Parker. Deontay Wilder is a much dangerous fighter, much more dangerous fighter than uh, Joseph Parker was. 
even at that time, is a greater risk there. And if he's making twenty million, twenty five million to fight Joseph Parker, he should be at least getting around forty to fight Deontay Wilder. If Wilder has to get paid twelve million, fifteen million, in order for Joshua to get paid the right amount of money, then so be it. He's the guy that holds three belts. Wilder holds one. He's the bread maker. You know, guys want to act like they don't want to talk about the politics of it, the A side, the B side shit. You know, they say that, but once they're fighter, you know, like when Errol Spence was on here talking about this guy's on the other side of the street, I'm the A side. It's okay when Errol, certain people do it. But when other fighters do it, they're like, ah, oh, we don't want to hear that shit. You know, I never want to hear that shit. But the reality is, the guy that is the bigger fighter is not going to make it fair for the other fighter, especially when you won three belts. You know, you're fighting better fighters. You know, you beat Klitschko. You know, you beat, you beat all these other fighters that are better. You know, at the end of the day, I think Wilder should have took the fight. You know, now as far as the 50 million, I'm not going to speak on it. You know why I'm not going to speak on it? Because I don't know the truth. I really don't know the truth. I don't know. None of us is at the negotiation table. None of us are, are in the room when it's going down. We don't know what these meetings are like. We're not in the meeting. We're not in the room. We're not listening to phone calls. We're not we, the phone uh, phone conversations. We're not in there. So if you're picking a side based on negotiations, based on what Eddie Hearn is saying or what Deontay Wilder is saying, there's what they're saying and there's the truth. We don't know what the truth is. You know, I know there was meetings canceled. You know, I do, I know there was attempts to make things happen. Uh, I I know that. Wilder is saying a bunch of stuff online, and I know that they, uh, Eddie Hearn is saying a bunch of things online. I know one is a promoter, and then one is a fighter. And the fighter doesn't sound right. But it doesn't mean that he's not telling the truth, neither. You know, I, I really don't know. That's the thing. So I'm not going to discredit Wilder for doing what he was doing. But what I'm saying is, there's a lot of things that really didn't make sense to me. Uh, like, you know, him saying that he had a restraining order. That's why he didn't go out there to fight him or see him ringside. Like, that's bullshit. You know, that's bullshit. You heard that he had a restraining order against you. That's bullshit. Like, when I hear stuff like that, you can't just tell me stuff like that and me say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you know what? Don't go out there. Nah, my man. Like, first of all, you ain't had no restraining order against you. That's, that sounds ridiculous, right? And second, even if you heard that, if you heard that, like there's no paperwork to show it, but you heard that, you should have been out there. Show us that you want the fight. All right. When well, you went out there last year for the Klitschko fight, and, and, and you know, I listened to a couple of these guys on YouTube. No one brings this up. Where was he when he went out there to see uh, Klitschko and Joshua fight? Where was he? He was on the sidelines entertaining a fight with Tony Bellew. You know, I want to see you fight Tony Bellew. <laughs> I don't want to see that shit. I don't want you over here on the sidelines. Nah, I want you at the ring. I want you at Joshua's neck. Not just on Instagram. I want you in his face. We've never seen you guys in the same face-off, shake hands, nothing, ever. And you're supposed to be chasing him, in my opinion. Joshua doesn't even chase you. I want him to fight you. I wish Joshua was like the kind of guy that's like, even in his post-fight interview, you know, he's a classy guy. Sometimes he's a little too classy. That's his character. That's him. That's his personality. That's him. I'm kind of like the same way. That's why I like him. I do like Joshua. I do like Joshua better. I like him. I like him better. I like him better. Do I think he beats Wilder? Uh, that's a different talk. That's a different conversation. But I like him better. But sometimes I wish Joshua would just... Like, yo, I want Wilder next. I don't, even t I, don't, I don't even want to talk about anybody else if it's not Deontay Wilder. I wish he say that. Now, in the post-fight interviews, I seen someone in the back, you know, in the back in the room later. He's like, listen, I want to fight Anthony Joshua. I want that fight to be for April. That's my first choice. But he sounds like a businessman, and that's him. He's a businessman. That's him. If that's this personality... I can't be mad at the way his personality is. 
you know, if that's the case, I'm going to be mad at all of these fighters because I don't like none of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I the more, most of them, I, I mean, I do like Joshua. I do like a few guys. I do like Joshua. I like Arrow. I just didn't like the last interview that he did when uh, Porter and, get, you know, when he was drunk. Uh, but outside of that, I like Arrow. I like Terrace Crawford. Uh, you know, I like a lot of these guys. Some of them I really do. I actually do really like Sean Porter. I do like Sean Porter. I don't like the way he fights, though, but I, I like him. But there's a lot of boxers that I do like. But I can't get mad at Anthony Joshua because he doesn't talk the way I want him to talk about a certain fight. That's that's just the way he is. He's consistent. That's the thing. He's always been that way. It's not like he's just like that when it comes to Wilder. You know? He's always been like that. He's a classy dude. He gets the fights done. They're prepared. And shakes hands. Man of respect. You know? The only guy that he felt was disrespecting him was Dominic Brazil when he tried he tried to walk up on him, walk on, down on him in that first press conference, they, they, that first face-off they had. You guys know what I'm talking about. But I think Wilder should have took the fight. At the end of the day, Joshua is the biggest star. You know, all this stuff with the fight should be here in the U.S. No, it shouldn't. You know, Wilder is known, more known here in the U.S., he is, but he's not known enough. He may be more known than Joshua, but he's not known enough. I seen when Joshua came out here to L.A., and I'm um, not here in L.A., but I mean in the States, you know. He was in L.A., and I seen that he was at the game, the basketball game. He was at the Golden State game or something, or, or I don't know where he was at. But I, I see that the, the announcers got his name wrong. Something like that. Yo, he's not known out here. He's a superstar. He's not a superstar here. And that's part of the reason why the fight shouldn't have been in Vegas. And this is these are the things that I'm I'm saying this now because I want to address it and, and move on from it. These are the things, these are reasons why the fight should not be here. And why is Wilder trying to make it a point that the fight should be here? Why is Wilder making a point that the fight should be 50-50? And why is his street team agreeing with that shit? <laughs> why are they agreeing with that it should not be 50 <laughs> 50 like let's be real this guy is not bringing the money this guy is bringing 80 filling up 80,000 seats and this guy is filling 10,000 seats this guy is making 10 times the amount in one fight than the other guy come on it is what it is we didn't like it when Miguel Cotto did it to Sergio Martinez but it makes sense who, 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 you know, who the hell is Sergio Martinez to the, 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 the majority of people that watch boxing? Who is he compared to Miguel Cotto? You know what I'm saying? So, with all that being said, I think I'm not blaming the fight not happening on Wilder. No, I am. I am. I just think he should have took what was offered. That's what I, I, I'm saying. As far as what went behind the scenes, the 50 million, was there proof of funds? One party saying it wasn't, one party saying it it, it, it was there. I, I don't know that. I can't, I can't make the argument for that. But I think 12 million or pushing into 15 was something that was very doable. I believe that I think Wilder should have did it. You know, you knock this guy out, and if you as confident as you, you make it seem, you should go and knock this dude out. And then in the second fight, it would be a second fight. Y'all come out here and fight in Brooklyn. Hopefully in Brooklyn, not in Vegas but or, or Vegas or whatever. And, and you do it there. You know? You do it there. Uh, but that's how I feel on that. Uh, you know, I, I think Wilder, you, you take the fight. If you get the opportunity to fight Joshua at this point, Joshua is that guy like a Canelo, like a Manny Pacquiao, like a Floyd Mayweather, that... If you can get the opportunity to fight him, you take it. The money is the you making your, your biggest paycheck fighting this dude at this point. He's that guy at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, if you can get the opportunity, take the fight. That's how I feel. Uh, who I think will win the fight between Joshua and 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 Wilder. Yeah. This is the thing. I think Wilder could get outboxed easily. 
I think Wilder could be down seven to zip. As soon as he lands a right hand, it's over. And that's the only way I can really call it. Joshua would have to fight. Joshua would have to fight a perfect fight. And just Deontay Wilder's right hand is devastating. His power is insane. I don't think it, I think his power is real. <laughs> I had to learn that at the Ortiz fight. You can be outboxing him. Ortiz was winning that shit. Was his other guy? Gerald Washington was outboxing. Gerald Washington was outboxing Deontay Wilder. As soon as he caught one, it was over. This guy got some serious power. And he's fast. And the fact that he doesn't fight traditionally, like, you know, his fundamentals are not always there. He looks sloppy at times, he looks wild at times, he does things incorrect. It works. He's that athletic. And he's fa he's fast. Wave Wilder fights. It gives really good technical fighters a hard time. So it doesn't always matter. Obviously, I think Joshua is 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 a more talented fighter. But I just wouldn't bet on Joshua winning if he gets chin checked. I, I can see Deontay Wilder taking some big shots and still hanging in there, whether he goes down, whether he's hurt. We've seen Deontay Wilder hurt. You know, we've seen him take big punches. I haven't seen him get knocked down, you know, outside of the amateur fight that he had. Uh, but. I don't know, man. I think Deontay Wilder might win that shit. You know? I think he might win it. You know, if, if they are to fight, I, I think Deontay Wilder might win that shit. I just don't, I can't see Joshua taking a clean punch from Wilder. Clean right hand. If he takes one, it's done. Yo, if Wilder takes one, he might be out. <laughs> you know, Joshua might hit harder than Luis Ortiz. You know, Eric Molina, guys that rocked him in the past. He might hit harder than all of them, you know, but, and, ugh, you know, that's how I feel about it. Tyson Fury is getting knocked out, in my opinion. It's not the same Tyson Fury. Uh, I don't know how many fights it's going to take. You know, at first I was like, you know, maybe I think he should, I just, I just think he needs more fights before he fights the, the, the elites. And uh, uh, maybe he fights more, three more fights, and he's still not at what where he was. He may not ever be where he was. He might be back to where he was in the next fight against Wilder. Who knows? But I think Pride Tyson Fury beats them all. I think he outboxes them all. He's just too slick, too swift. It's just too skilled. I think he beats them all. But the one that we're seeing right now, that we've seen this year, doesn't beat neither one of them, in my opinion. This is my opinion. Um, all right, so before I end this, I just want to say, uh, Dillian White deserves a shot, man. He deserves a shot. Um, He deserves a shot, man, at this point. Uh, I would have liked to actually see the Dillian White over Tyson Fury, current Tyson Fury, more with uh, Deontay Wilder. I would have liked to see that. Uh, Dillian White definitely earned uh, his fight. But Tyson Fury is definitely a better name to have on your resume. I'm not going to lie. So that was a good choice to pick Tyson Fury. I'm surprised the WCDC didn't try to force the fight yet with Dillian White, I don't know what the holdup is like. I think Dillian White has been like around that number one ranking area, one or two ranking WBC for for a while now, maybe for at least three fights. I could be wrong, but you know, I know, I know Ortiz was up there. 
uh, as well. Burn, Burn Mr. Vern just got a, moved up there randomly for that rematch, which was, was r ridiculous. Um, that was some foul shit. But I, I addressed that last year. Um, but I think Dillian White deserves a title shot. I don't want to see the rematch with Joshua, but I know that if this fight falls through, we're most likely to see a rematch with Dillian White. Do I want to see it? Not really. You know? But, you know, it is what it is. It, it, it is what it is. Uh, Fury wins against Wilder. Let him get his shot against Joshua. You know, Joshua should fight the winner of that fight, in my opinion. I still want to see the Wilder fight, but, you know, if Tyson Fury wins, he should be fighting Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is the man. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other heavyweight talk. Uh, that Charles Martin fight was, was incredible. That was a great fight last a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago on the Sean Porter card. Uh, against uh, the Poland Poland guy, I forgot his name. Sorry about that. Yo, bro, yo, Polish fighters. Whenever they're fighting in Brooklyn, yo, they come out. Large Polish crowd comes out to Brooklyn. They definitely support. They definitely support their fighters. Shit, I wish we did that with our fighters. <laughs> anyway, uh, see you guys on the next one. I'm done. Peace.